still alive, let's hit the dance floor. Don't work too hard, my break a backbone. Return to the Mac, the king is back though. Corvette and cash, I never lack those. She saw the stone, you know how that go. Fatality, my diamonds that cold. Versace trunks, I hit my backstroke. Knock on the door. She at the back, bro. All it really take is a little taste. I like girl blue eyes with a little bass. Here for the thrill, I don't need a chase, sir. Wanna vibe it to get away. Shimmy, shimmy, y'all got the semi four way. Don't step out the line like this, a probate. You hit the line and try to locate. This for the time, got time for no day. One, too many, I'm going. Two, too crazy, and I got three. bad ones, and they ready. Four. A good time, so now it's in the whip, we left that. Six. Can't remember anything, but I know we got late, late, late. Hello Hockey World, welcome back for the last time here to the New Zealand Heritage Hockey Tournament 2024, the place where culture and pride hit the turf and some of the best players in the country have the chance to stand up and represent their heritage. We're coming to you live from the National Hockey Centre here in North Harbour, home of the North Harbour Hockey Association and of course home of the New Zealand Black Sticks. It's the final day of tournament today and there's no better way to finish Easter weekend than the men's gold medal match here at Heritage Hockey 2024. I'm Brad Pittman, have been with you this whole Easter weekend, bringing you all 16 games of the tournament, thanks to the support of major sponsors, One Foundation. I'm joined in commentary by New Zealand Asian men's head coach, Sam Hewitt. Sammy, welcome back, big final ahead of us. Yeah, mate, uh, two really exciting teams. Um, yeah, it's gonna be good finals day. Yeah, it's been a good, good weekend of hockey, and. Um, yeah, no better way to finish with a gold medal match. Yeah, absolutely. It, it has been uh, nothing short of amazing this weekend. The weather's been beautiful. The facility here is world class. The hockey's matched up to everything so far this weekend. And like you said, what a better way to finish our weekend than with the men's gold medal match. This one here is, of course, between the New Zealand Indian sports men who are unbeaten taking on New Zealand Fiji boys who uh, you know, they met yesterday in a match and yeah it was back and forth and there was a little bit shown from each team finishing a penalty shootout which uh, actually served up a, a little bit of comedy uh, which was pretty exciting yesterday um, but look let's put all the laughs and jokes aside this one I'm thinking is going to look a lot different than the way it did yesterday uh, I think talking to both teams and both coaches they kind of showed half a hand yesterday at best. Um, you know, what do you think we're expecting out of these two teams today? Yeah, I think it's um, like it's two style clashes again, which has been good all weekend. Um, you got a fast, quick, um, short passing game from the NZI boys, and then um, quite a quite a long, direct game from the Polynesian boys um, with some real good creativity at midfield. So it's going to be a big. Big and, and good battle for us to commentate on, and I'm looking forward to it, Brad. Yeah, absolutely. You talk about style clash, and that's been the flavour of the weekend. It's what makes Heritage Hockey so special. Um, you know, not playing this game, but of course we had the introduction of the New Zealand Asian group that you looked after this year. Again, such a different style of hockey. The, the players that you had at your disposal, a lot more run-and-gun style, counter-attack, turnover, put some pressure on. Um, and it's really good for those different styles to really be lent on. How did you find, um, you know, experiencing that sort of difference in style and, and difference in players that you had? Yeah, obviously um, doing a lot in the Māori space. Um, 
they're, they're very flary players and something I'm quite used to. And then with the Asian boys, um, just high, high octane sort of hockey, um, sit back, sit back and defend our, our castle um, and then really break out at some speed. So um, it's always good as a coach to have that speed up front and um, it was about unlocking that and I think we, we did that quite well today. Yeah, and you're someone that's of course no stranger to heritage hockey. I've uh, been involved with the New Zealand Māori program, the New Zealand Pacifica program as well. Um, you have know, been here since the start, in our fourth year now. Um, you know, these are two teams that have been there uh, for most of it. You know, a new entity, I guess, in, in NZ Fiji, but a lot of these boys playing in the Pacifica outfits of yesteryear. Um, these are two teams that have been there since the start and players that have played a lot of these games before. Where do you think this one's won or lost today? Um, I... <sighs> I think it's going to be through the midfield. Um, you've got some really creative players on both sides. You've got Sarge um, and a few others on the NZI, and then you've got the likes of Jacob Suchun and stuff through the middle of the park for the Polynesians. So I think it'll be whoever can just sort of settle into the game well from the start, hold a bit of position. I think that's kind of what the game's going to be like. It's going to be a bit of a chess game. Um, and then, yeah, it'll just be about worrying about the exploits of the NZI guys coming into the circle. They get a lot of good numbers around there. And then it'll be uh, matching a little bit of the physicalness of the, um, the the Fiji boys who will get stuck into their work early as well. Yeah, as we see uh, our two umpires for today's match lead the teams out. The umpires in the middle, Sam Richmond and Jacob Camilleri, followed, of course, by the captains, Adrian Smith for NZ Fiji and Devon and DVD Bicker for NZI. Uh, this one's sure to be a cracker. Just going off previous form, this NZI team have looked hot all weekend. They started big uh, in their first game against the uh, Junior Māori boys, I think putting four goals away and haven't really looked back. Uh, yesterday's game, a little bit of anomaly, but like we said, half a hand probably um, showing there. This is a team that can, if they get things right, they can pile on goals. They've got probably the best front line in the competition. Um, Sammy, how do you keep a team like that at bay when they've got the likes of Josh Tarasingham, Heron Mani, uh, Shea Iswa up the front? It's going to be tough. It's going to be real tough. Um, but the good thing about the Fiji team is they do have a good um, back group. So it'll be about narrowing the press, um, squeezing the space in midfield, trying to get them to play wide. Um, the thing about the NZI team as well is they can attack from anywhere on the field. So it may be just the, the PR boys withholding a bit of pressure um, and then taking it to them. But I think this is going to be an awesome pleasure here today. Yeah, that's it. And I think one of the keys for those Fiji boys is just occupying good space in the defensive circle showing their physicality you got guys like Julius Talavao and Zaina you're big big guys that if they can just get this Indian side out of rhythm out of the areas they want to be in it could go a long way in upsetting that and I like the midfield matchup you talked about um, Sergeant Patel of course one of the gun midfielders uh, in the tournament uh, going up against the likes of Jake uh, Rocco Ludolf another one Dan Scanlon even when he rolls back into there I thought Kevin Gutenbill has been really good this weekend for the Fiji team um, that's going to be a real excitement uh, clash in there. Again, uh, it's going to be pride versus pace, I think, more than anything as we uh, we get out here. And the last thing, of course, to mention, the coaching staff, really solid. Um, Hitendra and Javant, you know, really smart hockey brains. Then you've got the likes of Stu Pitu and, and Kevin Fraser, Will Lacey looking after um, the Fiji boys. There's going to be a lot of information and a lot of adjustments being made through the game. Uh, it's going to be uh, really exciting to watch, I think. Yeah, for sure, Brad. Uh, it'll be good, good to see um, um, how Jandal really gets into this game. Um, he's one that can really unlock this PI team. Yeah, they, you know, we often use the cliche in sports as the, the spiritual leader, the heart of the team, the glue guy. Yeah. Uh, he epitomizes that, uh, Jan does. And, and uh, look, you're hard to miss him out there with the headband on, as long as he keeps it on all game uh, this time. And, uh, yeah, he could be the key to taking their midfield skill and flair, mixing it with some of the go-forward and the likes of Adam Kailia himself, uh, Calvin Ratabuli who started up there, and trying to put a bit of pressure on Dil Patel in goal. This first five or so, I think it's going to be a bit of, bit of back and forth feeling out. And then you'll see as the pay, uh, the game progresses, these guys get into their work. So um, enjoy this first five or so. It's going to be a little bit hectic, I think. Yeah, yeah, it is. And especially after yesterday, uh, usually you'd see these finals where the teams just feel each other out for periods. I think 
the start actually here could be the opposite of that. One team's perhaps just going to see if they can smack the other one before it, it even starts because um, it's going to be such a mental advantage if you can get yourself up early um, after yesterday's kind of back and forth number. Yeah, these, these, both these teams have started really well in their games. Um, I, know, I know the Fijian boys tried, tried that against the Māori juniors, tried to kill the game off quite early. Um, and then the NZI guys against us kill, definitely killed the game off pretty early. So, um, yeah, definitely right there, Brad. Yeah, and both teams that that live on confidence, especially going forward, and probably none more so than the Fiji team, if they can get one, it, it just becomes a real win as the next one. Yep. Where is it coming from? Because um, they score them in bunches, both these teams. Uh, but, yeah, like I said, if we can get one early... This first five minutes could be a real, um, real shot if either of the teams can do it. Let's see, nice full press here, wrap around from Guttenbill, peg him in the corner. Great exit. And there's that short passing game from the Indian side. Here's Saj Patel. Keep an eye on him. <laughs> he can't believe it. He thought he got clipped by Jan on the way through, and. A, I'd say the way Jan's looking away from the situation, he probably did. Yeah, if you ever see the whistle blind and Jan's turned around, he's probably done something wrong. Yeah, yeah it's ball through, cut out by her and Marnie. He's been everywhere this weekend. Uh, one of the best, um, one of the best, and of course, is sitting atop the goal scorers list at the moment uh, with four goals to his name as the Indian side comes through the front door here. Just overran it there, Sarge. Yeah, top goal scorers at the moment. There's three of them locked up on four goals. Braithen Lemon, Huron Marnie, and Dylan Muggleston. And, uh, yeah, they're all sitting on four goals. But the only one out here today is Huron Marnie. So he's the one that could push himself. Uh, although hot on the heels, I've got to make mention, Rocco Ludoff is sitting on three goals as well. So a double for him could uh, elevate him into top goal scorer. And I wouldn't put it past him in a game like this. Uh, yeah, if they go into a shootout today, I think he might spin four or five times <laughs> uh, in his arm, but... Yeah, from what I heard is he said, there's eight seconds, so there's eight <laughs> spins. We got um, dizzy watching that one yeah. last night. Yeah, I was talking to Dil Patel after the shootout. Uh, we might come back to that in a second. A bit of an attack here. Sarge, over. Talaval had to do it. Oh, ho, ho, ho. He Her almost and, flicked that over him. Uh, yep. Her and Marnie there was ready, had the tennis <laughs> tennis racket up, and Julius Tullivale come straight down the middle. That's going to be uh, a pretty exciting looking replay when we get a look at it. Um, but yeah, I was talking to Dil Patel after that shootout. He said he saw the first spin, the second spin he, he missed, and by the time the third one happened, he just walked out of the goal. <laughs> he was done. <laughs> saw it hit the post and was happy as. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, for those uh, unsure of what we're talking about, uh, the beauty of bringing you this live stream is all the games are still sitting there on YouTube, so get on and watch uh, yesterday's shootout between uh, these two teams. It wasn't just the triple spin that was uh, blowing people away. Uh, we almost had a conversion kicked by Dan Scanlon. Uh, that one's going to beat them all over the sideline. Let's have a look at this replay here, Sammy. This one. Oh, oh Tullabelle. And then some axe swinging from yeah. everybody involved. Uh, it's quite funny you mentioned that, Brad. I actually um, got into a bit of a rabbit hole last night. Didn't get to bed till 5 a.m. because I was watching like, 2021 Heritage, watching me play. Um, so it's, it's good that they're still there for, for the memories. And um, obviously being, a, being the new tournament in 2024, um, it's always good to be here at Heritage. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, we couldn't do it without the uh, support and sponsorship of Forces One Foundation for four years on the trot now, major sponsors of the tournament. Not only the tournament, but the live stream So. Get back in and watch them. Here's a shot from Kylea. Yeah, they're actually one of our sponsors for Oman as well. So, yeah, shout mm. out One Foundation for the hard work they do uh, in the space of hockey. Let's have a look at this one from Kylea. The in and out from Jandal finds Kylea diving. <sighs> That's not a lot in it there. It's at the side of the goal. He's, he's been looking, looking good at him this week. He's finally getting back into um, his fitness, and yeah. it's, 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 it's paying off. Yeah, and uh, these guys just break away. I was going to say, speaking of fitness, break. this Indian side full of it. Here's Prashant. Yeah, they don't stop. 
very hard to defend. Second wave through Mills. That's collected the feet there of Org. Lucky Adrian just tried to steal that one and just deflected off the stick into the foot. Yeah, but second wave there you saw from the Indian side, that was what really killed them. They defended the first one well. I thought they got around Prashant, but then when Mills was able to jump onto it, we'll touch, I think, in there from Amanjot Singh. Yep. Just finding the foot there of, uh, of Smitty. We might see him flick off this now. Um, exceptional talent for a young kid. Yeah. Um, unreal handles. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> He's set up on the second bracket. Looks like Prashant on the first. He's had a couple of upright hits this weekend. Let's see what they go to. First bracket, Prashant, upright hit, wide of the goal. They do like the um, slide left. Eh? They get a yep. lot of guys in. Tried it yesterday, I saw with Sarge um, dragging it through. So... Yeah, it just might be something uh, for them to watch out for. But like I said, they got this, they got some big bodies in that defensive circle, so it's, it is quite hard to get through them on penalty corners. Yeah, yeah. Have a look too. They they also slide the injector in on that narrow side as well. So there's two targets. I think yesterday I, I want to say Shea and Heron both in there on that side. Yep. Um, and when you're a big fella, when those guys are sliding in around your feet, it's pretty hard to defend <laughs> if they get it right. That's it. Jake Su Chun here. Oh, using both of his Tongan shoulders that time. Yeah, that's it. Prashant shaping Rizzi. Decides to go to Amanjot. Get your popcorn, ladies and gentlemen. In one. Pass the next one. Narasi. Saved well there. David Finau in goal. Look at the handles on this. Beats one. Pass two. Kirvin couldn't even get near it. <laughs> Yeah, the boys told me the other day, like, oh, how do we tackle someone like that? And I was like, yeah, well, they'll try and drag into your feet, so stay mobile. Yep. Um, but, yeah, you can say that a million times. Is it going to happen at the time? Probably not. Yeah, th that's exactly right. And if you don't get your first step right, you may as well take your second step towards the penalty corner <laughs> defense gear. Start putting it on. I'll just sub off, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, around the back here through Talaval. Under a bit of pressure. On oh, a rare miss from Sarge. And Scanlon here on the ball. Beats one. This is, uh, there's the tackle from Sarge. That's such a long pick. Yep. There, he's a tall, tall customer anyway, but when he can dangle it out in one hand like that. And of course, coming off uh, the recent Black Sticks training camp, uh, Sarge. I was just having a chat to him about that the other day. And um, yeah, so good to see someone from a heritage tournament. Um, that you, you probably don't hear about too much from being down in Wellington, but yeah, being him, uh, having him in the Black Six camp must be an awesome experience for some of these young guys. And so what I was saying to him yesterday is with, with not having much age group hockey around Aotearoa now, um, it's so good to have some young kids out here getting to experience some, some good hockey over Easter. Yeah, well, that's it. And I, we're having the same conversation with Uriwa in the last game, just around, you know, a lot of these players certainly around that sort of 18, 19, 20 mark and with, um, you know, no 21s anymore. Um, I know that there's the North versus South stuff happening, but only at the very top level. Yeah. Uh, this just starts to create perhaps a little bit of an opportunity for those players. Um, and you talk about guys like Sarge, you know, representing this, um, this tournament. He's been here all four years. Sarge travels up from Wellington every time, representing the... Uh, Wellington Indian Sports Club and NZI loves it. Yeah. Absolutely loves it. And he's a gun. Um, and that's the thing, you know, he's pushed back into the, the sort of AM position this weekend, but yep. still very deadly from there. Oh, that's it. That's it. It's, um, you know, probably used to seeing him at his best when he's up the front and, uh, you know, being able to one elimination, two elimination, shoot at goal. But he's just proving his worth here as well, uh, creating a second dimension for this NZI team. Is, Jake Su Chun, one of those players you mentioned, is getting a little bit of a breakthrough here. I haven't uh, got to make mention, you might uh, know a little more than me, but I haven't seen anything of Rocco Ludov just yet. Yeah, very interested in that. Um, Kevin, none of the boys said anything pre-game. No, um, no. I, I actually haven't seen him, so... I, I was going to say the same. I did see the teams warm up, and though I wasn't looking intently for him, but I didn't uh, see him out there and not listed in the starting lineup. We'll have to see if we can get confirmation about... 
because that, that would be a big loss for the boys. But I, I know, regardless of who's on the field, these um, the Fijian um, boys will still dig in deep. But yeah, obviously one of the eye catchers of the, to of the tournament so far. You, you really want him out here. Yeah, and without taking away from any other team, this Fijian probably uh, play with the most pride across yeah. the park. They won't care who's there or not there. They're just out there playing, doing it for uh, for the team. So here's Amanjot trying to get past Smitty. Good experience. Yeah, there. well defended. And out through Scanlon, Kylia. Yeah, well, about the Fijian boys playing with anyone. Yeah, they had to put up with me for two years, Brad. So, yeah, <laughs> they will play with anyone out there. You see that ball through from Kylia to Jan Peterson, uh, very nearly on the reverse stick there. Not an easy thing to do either at pace. And, and that's been the good thing about this tournament is the transition from attack to, uh, sorry, defense to attack has been so quick throughout the weekend. And we struggled with it a little bit, um, you know, especially against these two teams. So it's good that they kind of do it to each other as well. And <laughs> I don't feel like we were the only ones getting picked on. Yeah, yeah. No, it probably is one of the highlights is actually sitting down with some of the um, tournament organisers and just looking at how good the attack's been from a lot of the teams. And yep. most of that is built on speed and just how quick they can turn a turnover into something. To see Milan Patel here searching Josh Durasingham. Under a bit of pressure there. There's Kyle Carver over there. Jack now, Augie Shaw, Augustine Shaw it was. Uh, yeah, all of these teams can really turn a half chance at halfway into something in the back of the net in seconds, which makes things pretty exciting. Uh, but yeah, as a coach, it must be pretty frustrating when it oh, happens to you a few times. I'm glad the, um, the guys on cameras uh, didn't catch me a few times yesterday, um, <laughs> especially coaching against uh, two of my really good mates and David and Harley, but... That's, that's the nature of the tournament, you know, like our team's brand new, um, the connections aren't that great, so there will be defensive lapses that happen. Mm. Um, but you watch, you watch these two teams, they're a little bit more experienced in being here, and um, their shapes are a lot more um, compact, and they know where, where to be, so yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a really good game here, and I think, like you said, once the first goal goes in, I think the game will open up. Yeah, and you talk about connections and shapes and things. A lot of guys that have played a fair bit of hockey together, certainly in this um, Indian side. Uh, I know a few of the Wellington boys have made the trip up this year. This one of them, Devin Mbika, the captain. There's another one, Josh Durai Singham. There's a third one, Heron Marnie. That's the Wellington connection already. Corner. Yeah, it's come up off the stick there. I think from that shot that Heron Marnie was trying to take. I think it's a similar call we sort of... Uh it's actually outside the circle. Yeah, which yep. is quite interesting. But I just looked at Frenchie and said nothing else, so we'll, <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Yeah, yeah. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. But yeah, good opportunity uh, for this NZI boys. Obviously, the the penalty corner bracket isn't really their their go-to, but they can still slot a goal from anywhere, especially with a lot of the guys that get in on good areas. Yeah, it looks like Shea Aswa has pulled himself onto the first bracket here. Yeah, low flick from Shaharikin. Yep. You try and test out the feet of uh, David Finau. Here it is, Viswa. I want to say potentially saved uh, on the line there. Does it maybe Scanlon get a little bit of that? Somebody certainly did for it to be a long corner. Interesting to see the replay from the end on. Here is Iswa. That one straight over the back line by Augustine Short. Yeah, if we have tournament here next year, Brad, I'll make sure we take this pole out of the way for yeah. you so you can um, see, see the, the yeah. tough, But It's actually the left glove of David <laughs> Finau we just saw on the replay there, yeah. not Scanlon. I was just trying to give him some credit after bagging <laughs> on him for the last three days. Uh, good stuff in there, Scanny. But you're right, uh, Sammy, for the million dollar facility, I'd love some glass poles here <laughs> instead of whatever this is. That's it, buddy. Iswar again on the first bracket, it goes to him. There's that one, that's a little bit more of that rip looking for the uh, deflectors there. Her and Marnie on the r right side that time. Just trapped it dead. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, they'll get a reset though, I think the uh, runner just played through the back of his stick. 
It's third time the charm here for the Indians. Oh. It was about the world's slowest drag flick. Was about to undo them all there. And the dribbler. Yeah. Bit of space there for Adrian. Yeah, like this. Three on three, but Indian numbers coming back quickly. It's a good hold up from Smith, but it's also held up enough time for the Indians to get in there. Just looking for the ninja and Jan sliding through. They, they have a good connection, those two. Yep. Um, but that's the thing with it. They're right back on attack now. The, the music. How, um, how cool did Chahul Lala just look there? Easy as <laughs> on the hotline. Nothing ever seems to look like it troubles him too much. Yeah, that's it. His uh, brother was here uh, yesterday giving us some tips. Yep. Um, obviously, if you didn't know, um, so, uh, Charles' brother Sanjay, uh, really good, experienced player. Yep. Uh, but yeah, he's giving him a few tips because not not the preferred uh, position for Shahu, but he's done a good job this weekend at, at centre back. Yeah, absolutely, and it's so cool to see uh, see him back out here. You talk about uh, the Indian Snoop Dogg and, and <laughs> Sanjay Lala's brother. So cool to see him down at the turf over the weekend. Yeah. Um, and that hooter brings the curtains on the first quarter here. Uh, there was excitement at both ends. Uh, you know, there was opportunities going both ways. Uh, a few penalty corners there to the Indian side, but, I mean, nothing to separate the two teams on the scoreboard just yet. Um, what did you think of that first 17? Yeah, it was, a, it, was, it was quite good. You know, both teams had a little bit of position at times, and they were just trying to work each other um, to the circle. Um, quite a few counter-attacks from the Fijian boys. Um, but, yeah, I think... Slowly but surely, they'll they'll work this out into the game, and like like you said earlier, the Fijian boys live off confidence. So if they can put a bit of pressure on this um, NZI team, you never know what can happen. Yeah, that's right. And as uh, we look at some of these highlights here from that first quarter, this one from Kylia, that's very nearly the first one. Uh, penalty corners, the flavour for the Indian side. I think they had four of them in that first quarter. If I'm Remembering correctly, this narrow trying to pick up DVD Bicker. Armanjot, he caused chaos as he always does. And this one here from Hiramani set up that string of penalty corners we saw to end the quarter. This one, yeah, there it is. Glove save off Finau. And giving away another one not long after. Some of this play up the baseline. Shea has been solid. Uh, as usual, and the teams will come back out here. Still locked up at nil all. One quarter down in the men's gold medal match. It's the New Zealand Indian men taking on New Zealand Fiji. Of course, the Indian boys uh, undefeated. Two wins and a penalty shootout win. That shootout win coming over this Fijian side. Who actually had uh, two shootout losses on their week. Uh, remind us, Sammy, who that first shootout loss was against. Well, they're it's a quite a decent team. They've got a good coach as well. Um, <laughs> the, the New Zealand Asian boys were actually um, 10 from 10 over the weekend, which is it's pretty crazy in our, in our hockey space to, to not miss a shootout. Yeah, um, right. I, I didn't actually put the two together. No, nah, but um, um, yeah, having the Great Wall of China in the goal, we call <laughs> Mr. Casey. Um, yeah, he did really well in both shootouts. And then you can't build that pressure without your boys putting it in. So, yeah, um, yeah just told them. The five boys that are up, just be confident, pick your spot, and enjoy it. So, yeah, that's how we've got our points this weekend as a shootout. So, I said to the boys, maybe we can win in regulation time <laughs> next year. But no, nah, it's overrated. No, nah, it's overrated. It makes it exciting, and and obviously for the NZ Asian boys to to get that first up win against such an experienced team on day one was was good. And then we had two days of sort of um, improving our hockey, and then today I think was our best game. So, yeah. You don't want to verse us in shootouts, mate. We're uh, pretty good at them. So. Yeah. And like I said, crazy to go 10 for 10 attacking in a, in a penalty shootout. Yep. Um, you know, usually, especially with the goalkeeper of your calibre, usually you'd say, well, he, he saved us away there. And yep. while he defended well, it was your attackers, really, that, that put the heat on. Yeah. Uh, no, it was crazy. Had a bit of a cheeky comment with the uh, Fijian boys after that. We'd been practising them all month. And... Um, <laughs> Yeah, they, they sort of threatened to remove you from the group chat. So, um, <laughs> yeah, no, nah, it's it a good bit of banter. And, um, obviously, being involved in so many teams, you know, everyone gives me a bit of stick. So I think I might be a part of the NZI team next year, maybe. <laughs> that's it. That's it. I think uh, you know, three more trips to Shamiana, and I think you probably qualify. <laughs> uh, ball just falling through a few defenders there. 
Armani Punga there on the ball. Who was another player who's also played for the uh, Pacifica team. Yep. Um, so he's a bit of a cross-code player as well. I'm out here for uh, NZI today. Yeah, and we've had a few of them in the time. I think Alex Dio, another one that springs to mind. Yep. Um, he's played for both teams. Uh, I'm sure that they're not the only ones, but here come this Indian side through DVD. Look at that. Reverse stick pass on a dot to Hiran Mahani. Talk about connections. Yeah, those Wellington boys, they've got it tuned up real good this weekend. I mentioned some of them earlier. Kaelin Dial's another one in that mixer for the Wellington boys. Sarge, of course. They've got a good group, uh, those Wellington boys. And um, I know a couple of years ago they won the, their club comp down there and yep. they were coached by him and Lala, which was uh, my school coach when I was going up and talking to... So just that you can you can tell that these players have been coached by a certain player, and when they're asking me like, "Oh, how old are you, mate? Who, who did you play for?" I was like, "Yeah, he coached me when I was a youngin." So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's good to see the development in Wellington, um, and then bring coming up here must be cool for the likes of the boys from Pookie and, and Auckland um, to be able to play with um, some some good lads that come out of KBT. Yeah, for sure, for sure, and um, I know a lot of the work that Hitu's doing in that um, development space for NZI. It's really starting to pay dividends. Uh, you know, for those unfamiliar, they have their National Indian Tournament, um, King's Birthday Weekend. It was Queen's Birthday Weekend. It's one of the longest running tournaments in, yeah. in the country, any sport. One of the coolest too. Yeah, absolutely. And, and um, what they've started to implement now is the day before tournament starts, all these NZI identified players getting together, have their camp first. Yeah. A couple of sessions on the turf, a couple of whiteboards, and just get things rolling so that when they get out there, um, they're starting to work on some some specific things and, and creating a bit of an identity so that when they get together for these sorts of fixtures it's uh, getting stronger and stronger and, and um, from what I was speaking with Hitu they've got to a point now at NZI where it's not just selecting the guys that are available they're actually making selections based on performance and that's where you can see them getting stronger and stronger yeah absolutely and obviously they got the right man in the position for it yep. um, you know I, I saw the other night you, you had um uh, Keaton Hari on here is yep. one of my um, ex-teammates for, for many, many years. And um, he did really well the last couple of years with the group. And then um, obviously him being over in the UK um, brings Hidu back in. And um, they really respond to a guy like him who has um, such good knowledge in hockey um, across women's and men's hockey. So, yep. um, yeah, a little shout out to Keaton, my old teammate. Um, but, yeah, well done to Hidu to getting this team. Looking so great on the pitch. Yeah, and uh, the last thing that Suresh has started to fill me in on is they're then developing coaches. So Jay Van Danji, yep. who's jumped in and, and part of this Indian men's mixer. You talk about uh, previously Keaton being uh, involved with them and now overseas. Priya Kang's another one who's been involved in their women's side, yep. uh, which is epic. It allows Navina to still get out there and play and, and provide her experience in both facets. So, yeah, really cool thing that they're doing here. Um, with this NZI program and for them to have a first time all Indian women's team, yeah. uh, epic as well. So major hats off to the NZI um, group, what they're doing at the moment. And, uh, out here at the, at the minute, I'm trying to put a little bit of a squeeze on this back group for NZ Fiji. And you don't see that many times by Julius? No, no, unforced error there. It's going to fall for Narasi. Oh, second time lucky. Yep, there it is. Down it goes towards that 25-yard line. Yeah, the book boys need a break, I think. <laughs> Get down there, make them work it back. And that's it. I think the Fijian team will be happy to just sort of sit back and withhold a bit of pressure. And then when they really break out, it will be about them taking the opportunities. Yeah, that's it. And it could be the case of, uh, like most finals are, who can capitalise on those opportunities. The thing for this Fijian side is they might have to weather a bit of storm to create an opportunity, whereas the Indian side, I'm, I'm going to assume, will probably have a few more of them just based on their ability to play at that speed for longer periods of time. Um, but it still comes down to execution as... Great tackle. Yeah, Zach, Zach Buenamasi two times on Sachin Chiba. He's not hard to stop Sachin too. He's very quick. Um, good change of speed, but that's the thing about this Fijian guys is the big levers at the back. You've really got to stretch to get around them. Yeah, that's where somebody like Sargent becomes so deadly. Yeah, uh, he's got his pace and the length. 
Uh, such a tough customer to defend. As we see Smitty, the wily old veteran, at the back there for this Fiji team. Uh, great pass. Downtown now for Ratabuli. Oh, great tackle. Oh, huge call here. Penalty corner. The Indian guys can't believe it. They're still arguing about it. And again, one that could play on either team. Akil Patel out there. <laughs> Just giving the Indian brothers a little bit of a what for. See the replay here. I just think that's a great tackle. Yeah, I think what the potential could be is that first contest there out yeah. on the circle edge and no Possibly, real advantage, yeah. potentially. Um, yeah. Again, we're not down there. We can only see what we see, but... Cause, yeah, it was definitely a good first move from Calvin. Just opened up the body, dragged the cross, and he gets rewarded for it. So yep. this could be that opportunity that they need to take. Well, that's it. And I've said a few times here, you make your own luck, regardless of what the guys in pink say. You've still got to be in it to win it. And he was in there. Ayuk, uh, second chance at it. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting thing too. So I'm guessing Rocco isn't playing. Um, yeah. Obviously not been on yet, but they will miss that a little bit. Because he has flicked well this tournament. Yeah, yeah, he's probably been, you know, one of the better flickers. Even the likes of Dylan Muggleson hasn't had a great tournament at the bracket no. for um, for you boys. Ben Schwass probably had a better weekend of it <laughs> than Dill has. Um but yeah, Rocco's been probably the other one who's really buried a couple of corners. So um, yeah, that could be huge. Yeah, I apologise to Dylan a bit. I uh, didn't really give him a sub the whole tournament, so I'm not surprised he didn't have much energy up on the penalty <laughs> corner. But <laughs> hey, man, when you got a player like Dylan, Dylan Muggleston in your team, you, n you need to keep him on the field. Yeah, and isn't he one that's um, you know been a real success story out of this heritage? He really put his name up two years ago um, in his first outing here. And, um, you know, following that, obviously had some um, New Zealand age group call-ups and, and played some NHC for Auckland and now, you know, one of the premier players in this tournament. Absolutely. He, he, he's really loved it this weekend. Um, a lot of them have. Um, sort of being, yeah, like I said the other day, minorities in the hockey space, they've really embraced um, the Asian culture that they're from. And uh, a lot of people look at, look at Dills and probably don't think he's got much Asian in him, but... Uh, he talked about you know his his father and his family all week, and um, he he did them really proud this weekend. Yeah, and isn't it a? Um, actually, we'll see this opportunity come through from Amanjot. There's her and Marnie. Oh, come on! What is better than her and Marnie scoring goals for NZI? Look at him! Look at what it means to him. And he's been on replay all weekend, man. Oh. He's just been, that's his, that's his home on the back post. Yeah. Really, really good and patient. Just holds position, hold position. It's a fantastic pass there from Sachin Chiba. Oh, Split the feet there of Jan Peterson. He can't believe there was a gap that wide. Yeah, and, and uh, the young man as well again. Was it Amanjot with the, with yep, the with assist? The, with so. the delivery. Yeah, he has, he has been a weapon for him uh, this weekend. You know, we talked about it. It's... It's quite hard because no one knows who he is. So um, obviously being a young kid uh, with that much skill, um, you, you, you can't give him any time or space. Yeah, he's been uh, been impressive. Can't wait to see as those skills develop and mature. Exceptional. In the next couple of years, I'm sure they will. Uh, but Heron Marnie, not only does it put the Indian side ahead, it puts him ahead in the top goal scorers list. And now with the only one out there, considering we've now found no Rocco Ludoff, he's going to wrap it up there, Heron Marnie. Yeah. With five goals at the moment. And look, I'd say all of them inside that three to four yards from the circle, uh, from the uh, from the goal. Yeah, and that's, that's a good trade of a good striker. You know, a lot, a lot of strikers these days, um, the balls will go past the fast post and they're beyond the spot, yep. really wanting the ball on their stick straight away. Um, yeah, like hearing what he does is he, he just holds space. Um. Fina out there. Oh, Mahani on the carpet. Trying to get another one. You're right, yeah, Sam. I think, I think that's the difference between a sort of club level and then taking that next step is yeah. so many of the goals are scored in that seven yard box and in that area from spot in yeah. and a lot of these strikers you say oh, I can rip Thomas from this angle and yeah. I can bin them from the, the top yeah. but can you put the bouncy one away well that's it and 
you know, they, they all try and run so close to the ball to get the touch when all they really do need to do is just hold space. Yep. Keep that defense guessing because, you know, if you, you, you hold your space, defender has to pick one of you and then all of a sudden Heron's at the back post putting it in, you're yep. picking it out. So, um, yep. yeah, he, he's been good all week. Yeah, and if you uh, need to see any more examples of that, pick any game oh, that mate, the Indian yeah. boys have played. Yeah, he's done it against everyone, I think. He's the, the tall Johnny Bilkey. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and here again, this Indian side causing a bit of chaos through the 15-year-old. From what I understand, his 16th birthday tomorrow, which is unreal to think. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's absolutely crazy. Big strong tackle there from Zaki. Yeah, I thought he'd probably uh, oh. won that one. And again, we talk about Tongan shoulders. Adam Kylie has got three of them. Yeah. I'm waiting to hear uh, when he's fighting Joseph Parker, eh, yeah. to be honest. Um, oh, I thought he was playing him in the next <laughs> movie. but Yeah, he had a few, he's had a few tussles this week, but um, <laughs> that's just Adam to a T. Yeah. He usually does it with a smile on your face, so it's a bit um, conflicting. It's like this guy's pushing me around, but he's smiling at me. So. And I think it actually rocks players up more. <laughs> yeah. That's just his nature. He, he's, yes, looks tough and he's built strong and all the rest of it, but he's, um, what you call a, a gentle giant, I guess. And he'll come off the field, smile, hug you, uh, and that'd be it. So, you know, just a tough customer, plays with a lot of pride. That's it, mate. Um, but he loves it out there. Yeah, and he's a, an Otara boy, so, you know, they, you live and die with that, um, yeah, that, that sort of matcha. So, yeah, it's, it's good to see him out here um, giving it his all. And, and, and sometimes that, that sparks the boys up, you know. Yeah. Well, you saw he scored that goal yesterday. That sent them through to a penalty corner and a ah, penalty shootout. Yeah, it was a nice mistrap. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nah, it was good, good to see him in those right areas and... Yeah, very unconventional touch, but hey, goal's a goal, so. Yeah, still just the one goal separating these two sides through her and Marnie in the second quarter. And we're inside three minutes left to play here. And that is not how you want to end your quarter. Just throwing one to Connor Narasi. Back to Durai Singham. I've been really impressed with um, how this NZI team um, slides in their screen. Yeah, they really put you under pressure, um, just by sliding as a unit. Yeah, yeah, they um, they're in sync when they start moving, and you know, we don't hear a lot of it up in the commentary box because we are a little bit elevated. But just the comms that are coming from their back group, um, which is really impressive considering they're missing some of the normal middle defenders that they would usually have out there. Um, yeah. So you've got guys like Brett Menezes playing at the back, Shahil Lala. Uh, you know, Milan Patel, these sorts of guys that are playing at the back. Just getting them on good lines, they slide well. No, no, they've been really impressive. And that's it, you know, the last um, couple of years they've had the exploits of uh, Nitesh Sukha uh, at the back, controlling them from the back, and obviously him and Kelly are in Melbourne at the moment, uh, playing some club hockey, so hopefully one day we see those two boys back in this uh, NZI, or Hopefully not, because it makes them <laughs> even better. But, um, yeah, I thought I'd just shout out to those two guys who've been stalwarts for, for this team a couple of years and now over in Aussie uh, applying their trade. Yeah, yeah. And I think uh, they came back to last KBT. They mm -hmm. came and showed out for Pookie yep. on their way to winning the Diane Chand, uh, which is an epic moment for those guys. Yeah. And uh, cool to see Manisha actually make the trip back this year. So she's living over there with them now. Yep playing at the moment so she came back across for this year's tournament um, yeah shout out to to those guys and uh, hope everything's going well over there with you boys and two for the the boys in the Fijian team you know obviously the Fraser's overseas and they're a big part of um, you know the engine room of this team yep. and um, yeah, obviously another name Luke Aldred um, you know the the pineapple pizza king from Hawaii um, yeah, so it's a, it's a bit of a new look Fijian team, um, but still still with a lot of experience and and flair. Yeah, and again, when we talk about finals um, not always being won by uh, the team you'd expect, but the team that digs in and, and stands up in that final game. You can have all the uh, yeah. the round robin goals and wins that you like, but just like we saw in the women's 
great. I think experience stood up when it mattered. That's it. And that's where I think you see some of the uh, the likes of uh, Adrian Smith and Julius Tullivan, some of these guys that have been here for a few years, really standing up for this Fiji side because many people would have said if you'd asked about it um, that this Indian team were going to run them off the park. Yeah, absolutely. And, mate, this... This Fijian team stuck in the battle and they've given themselves a chance to um, to stay in this game. So, Yeah, and that hooter, of course, is the end of our second quarter. It's halftime here in the men's final. We are 1-0 here in favour of NZISA. Thanks to that man on screen, Huron Marnie. And uh, we're going to go to a short ad break and then come back with some of the highlights from that first half. We'll see you back shortly. Welcome back here to the men's gold medal match. It's half time here between New Zealand Indian Sports and New Zealand Fiji. And it's Indians up 1 0 here at half time. Sam, it's uh, been back and forth. There's been opportunities at both ends. I've been really impressed how this Fiji side have stuck into this uh, contest so far, despite the Indian side coming in as favourites. What have you liked so far in the match? Um, yeah, it's been, it's been back and forth. Um, obviously, um, the Fijian team have have sort of sat back and um, you know counted all the attacks that they brought through. Obviously, um, Heron at the end got a, a really nice goal, but um, they've they've done well to keep themselves in the game. At one 0 it's anybody's game, and you know it just takes one goal from the Fijian guys, and this game could really open up. Um, and you just see that that shot there by Adam Kailia was just inches away. Yeah. yeah, very impressed. Yeah, absolutely, and I think um, you're right in terms of. They've scrambled well, this Fiji inside. Where they've had to, they've got bodies back in the way. Uh, we saw that little save in the air from Julius Talavao a little earlier. Um, those sort of moments is what can really make or break um, your final. Same with that one there from Kirvin. It's just taking guys doing that extra little bit of work uh, to get in the way and to really break down the attack of this Indian side. Um, obviously, one did get through, thanks to Heron Marnie and, and his brilliance and his ability to finish goals, but... Um, the longer this Fiji side can hang in, the longer they become a threat. Exactly. And that's the thing. Um, obviously, the NZI team are, are really skillful and they link really well. Um, so it's just about being patient and solid in your defensive formation. And as, as you can see, the opportunities will come. Um, they've had quite a few opportunities on that goal. Uh, you see the big man going for a, a time there. But yeah, it's just about uh, being patient. You know, obviously, you're not going to run this, this NZI team off the park. Um, <laughs> which a great finish. Like he's been there all weekend. Yep. Uh, he, he could set up a 10 there, to be honest. Yep. And you still won't know he's there, but that's the thing. That the NZI team has had to work really hard for that goal. So, um, yeah, the, yeah. the NZFG team can um, take take a little bit of that and, and then hopefully um, put it towards scoring their own one in this, this second half. Yeah, and I think that's full credit there to the uh, Fiji inside. Just how hard that Indian side have had to work. It's the, the first time I've really seen them... Um, have to fight for those goals they've, I wouldn't say come easy over the weekend but they've been able to put them on um, uh, with relative ease at, at yeah. times so you know this Fiji inside they're really getting in the fight um, they're knuckling in and, and making things difficult for this uh, Indian side 
and I think it's one thing we spoke about in the pre-game is with the physicality and some of the size of, of those uh, Fijian boys at the back, that's the way they have to play them. They can't try and get into foot race. They can't try and, and skill up one-on-one -on -one with them. They're going to have to make things uncomfortable. Uh, and they've done pretty well so far. They have done really well, and, that, and that's the thing. You just need to hit, try and slow them down, and you might give away a free hit or so, but that just means that your team can get back, sit in their structure, and then and take the next two minutes or, or so of pressure. But they still have some weapons out on the field. Obviously not having Rocco out there is a big miss. Um, some of them can break the lines, but look for someone like um, Jan or, or Jacob Suchun to uh, really try open up this NZI team with some flair and some skill. Yeah, and we were just talking a little bit about it off off air. Um, obviously, we've yeah now had the confirmation Rocco's not here uh, for the day's game, which you said is a, a big out. But just talk about what it means for guys like Jake Suchun, who probably just has to play a little bit deeper in the field there to try and help the ball through. How does um, how do they start getting more players involved with the attack and flair, knowing that they're missing a game breaker like Rocco? Yeah, um, it'll just be about um, trying to get those connections slightly closer together. Um, you know, like I said before, Jan, someone that can really uh, break up a game. So I think it'll be about the back group trusting the midfield, getting the ball into them early, um, and then supporting them on those attacks. Because, like I said, they have the flair and the skill. Um, it's just about getting those links closer so that they can interplay between the NZI press. Yeah, and it might only take sort of one or two phases, and then that long ball that they're good at can come. That's it. Um, but it's, yeah, making those first connections and not relying on that straight open and be able to eliminate. It might just take an extra phase before that long ball comes. As we see it, an absolute dot at the top of the circle. Oh, no. There's your man again. No guesses taken for who's there and who's in the hunt. Heron Marnie, uh, you talked about setting up a, a tent. I think he's charging rent down there at the moment. <laughs> so we hear the uh, happy birthdays in the clubhouse. I'm pretty sure it's for Trinell or Zerueta, the young defender from the New Zealand Junior Māori side. And as we see, opportunity now here for Kailea. The whistle blew about five minutes ago, yep. I think, for that one. Yeah, the um, whistle blew in the first half, but he still had a crack at it there. Kailea, it's a hell of a finish if it wasn't 25 minutes after the whistle. <laughs> I do have a correction as well. Someone else's birthday, I think. Um, someone said uh, Jaina was turning 40 today. Uh, <laughs> she's actually turning 34. So, um, yeah, thanks, Anil. I'll take those beers um, after that. So, yeah, yeah, we did have a little shout out to, to Jay <laughs> earlier in the uh, in the commentary. There's two birthdays. Uh, you're right there, Jaina Suka being the other one. Yep. Yeah, as we yeah, saw a little back and forth there, a chest pass literally from Adam Kylea <laughs> bumping it off the pecs. <laughs> And now the opportunity for the Fiji team. Where's Adam gone? I think. Did he get sent he off? He may have been sent off for hitting that <laughs> ball. Because they need him right now. Yeah, this is the flick that you'd love to see Adam Kailea lining up for. Although Gutzer's got an all right flick on him too. Yeah, Kervin couldn't be along the first bracket. They go to Kervin. What a save. Oh, that's money. That's beautiful stuff from Milan Patel. Get him in the black caps, oh, man. Oh, I tell Absolutely. you what. Absolutely. Look at that. That's the Indian Ross Taylor. That's it. And way better looking. <laughs> as, uh, you see him down here now putting some defensive work on. Yeah, uh, yep, can confirm the card. Yep, the boy. St. Kent's finest right there. <laughs> Adam Kylie with the, uh, the green card after... Scoring a goal eight minutes after the uh, the penalty corner was blown. Easiest way to get a break when, <laughs> when your coach ain't giving you one. Well, have you ever seen that win a corner and get sent off for it? No, nah, but Adam Adam can do that, obviously. I look at him go, but I think <laughs> the, the whole game had stopped. Yeah. He just won it off and still hit it. So. Yeah, it was too tempting <laughs> sitting on the upright reverse there That's for it. him. A sort of full press here. Interesting, the full press with 10 players. Yeah. I do like it, but it's dangerous if they get it wrong. They've got Jacob it right. Yet. Here is Suchun up the field, turns on the outside. Unlucky. Oh, and just spun it away there. Good defense, though, by Dial. That's had a good, good intent as well. They just left a little bit of fake space in the midfield, and Jacob reads that stuff so well, makes a steal, and then he's on attack. A little bit of confusion up the front there. Yeah, Jan's still telling him, I think. The uh, Fiji boys thought it was a long corner and was setting up for it. And it's now down the other end. Oh, oh. 
Connor and RC, we've what? seen him score those before for CD. Wow, that would have been uh, an absolute game breaker. Yeah. Those are those sort of finals goals which uh, can pretty much bring an end to it all. And especially when, um, you know, the guys may be contesting a call, you know, as a coach, it's, it's so disheartening, but at the same time, you know, a slight bit of confusion um, can cause the overlap of 15, 20 metres and you're never getting back anywhere. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And speaking of getting back, the Indian boys are going to have to get back now. Here comes the Tongan, Fijian, Pacific Island, Samoan, Thor, whatever That's you it. want to call him. Hard out. He's got four flags in his garage. <laughs> One of them's a Warriors flag. Oh, mate, good win last night too. Great the win. Boys. Great win from the boys. Roger looking dangerous. Oh, man. That one over the sideline. Should get him out here for Heritage, man, and oh. whack some people. Would be yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, doesn't even need a hockey stick, nah. I reckon. <laughs> Just bring the archers out. Yeah, man. How good was uh, having Blairy on the call, just counting oh. out the arches? Yeah, oh, man. <laughs> oh, speaking of arch, see you later. Armand Jot, Tuivasa Sheik there. And good defence by the Fiji boys. Yeah, I'm surprised they've um, they've let old mate dribble this much, but also it's, it's about catching him too. So. Oh, it is. Uh, real good talent. As Here he's back. He's back. Uh, bro back after his three-round uh, boxing match with the ref. <laughs> yeah. He's about to go three more with any yeah. defender who wants it to. Up there. And it's in the goal. He can't oh, believe wow. it. Moritz Raymond. Love that. And look at that. They ride the horse back to halfway. Moritz Raymond. I think Moritz is, must be one of the new boys. Um, I haven't, haven't had the pleasure of meeting him in the Pacifica team yet, so good on him for scoring in such an important game with a one-handed touch. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, that's a great shot of it on the replay. I'm sure we'll have another couple of looks at that at the quarter break, but um, timely, I think, and not to be understated, is Adam comes back on, puts a little bit of pressure on, they win the ball, there's the opportunity. That's it. And, and that's the thing. You, Adam's really similar to um, one of the young junior Māori boys in um, Te Oranga. Um, yep. they, they play the game with a lot of passion. It's about channeling, channeling that at times. And, yep. You know, it's definitely beneficial for the team when they're on the field. Um, so look to Adam to sort of rectify that now and, and get stuck into the NZI team. And just like that, Sammy, we are all locked back up here, one apiece. It's uh, probably not who you thought was going to be on the scorers. Right. Sheep, but it doesn't matter who, it just matters how. That's it. And look at them now, a bit of confidence. Yeah, we talked about this. This is how the Fiji inside like to play. Yeah. Oh, what's this? Yellow card there. Is that for too many people on the field, maybe? Oh, I'm not entirely sure. I. Because <laughs> it looked like Chad. Had came stepped on. on and then stepped back off. Yeah, I'm wondering if that's the case, which is uh, a real shame. All yeah, I see the, the TD now on the side counting players, so I'm yeah. guessing that's what it was for, which is a shame just after you built a bit of pressure. But you look at Jan, he's probably about two or three men anyway. Yeah. It's an interesting, uh, actually, that, 10 man, uh, that 12 man call because usually when that's the case it's the captain that gets sent off so not a hundred percent sure um yeah, that's why we put kurt jones as captain um yeah it in is. fact it's uh, it's adam oh. kylea who's sitting down I i'm wondering there was one i did see just on the edge of the circle down this end where he stuck out that tongue and shoulder probably <laughs> a little bit too far um in defense there i'm wondering if it's that i can't confirm but um, must be. i think chad must have been coming on for one of them and then had to sit back down so <laughs> Ah. <laughs> Just as uh, we talk about the brilliance of Adam Kailia, uh such as the show, the showman himself. That's it. And now a big opportunity for this Indian side, though. They're up 11 to 10 on the field, of course. Yeah, it'll be a big shift here. They definitely, the Fijian team definitely has the team to sit in this 10-man press, but, you know, could exert a lot of energy for for the next quarter and a half. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Sergeant, he's going to look to enter. 
can't have been far off the stick there of Sheasai. He'd got inside position. He hasn't celebrated it, though, so that tells you all you need to know. Sorry, I did that a few years ago and got told off by Jan. So <laughs> I'm surprised it was only Jan. <laughs> well, he celebrated with me, and he said, don't ever make me look like that again, bro. <laughs> and I said, he said, are we anywhere near it? And I was like, no way, mate. But, hey, Keaton's coaching on the other side. I'm going to celebrate it. So. <laughs> Cross it goes onto the feet, though, of Josh Thurosingham. And do, do we have confirmation of length of that card as well? I, I would say it is just a five minute. If it is um, a ten, he's done a good job of it. Yeah, I, I would <laughs> say if it's ten, we would have known a little bit yeah. more about it. Yeah, true. Yeah, but all of them hurt when yeah. you're down a player in a final, That's especially it. when you've done so well to to lock things up. Just having to exert that extra effort for five minutes is uh, is really going to pay a toll on the legs. A little bit of back and forth there, Su Chun and Dial. Su Chun getting the better of it that time, but looks a little dizzy coming out of it. Here's Gutenbeel. And how's that? I love that. Gutz gives him a little pat on the back because he yep. said, We've probably been giving it to you all game, and you know, they get one and they get carded. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no cards? Okay, no cool. cards no, there. No, no. All right. Fair enough. And uh, he loved that. They just got Adam's name on. <laughs> the winger coming in and taking it on the front rower. <laughs> How good from Kalen Dale. Yeah, it's like DWZ mm -hmm. going in on the floor. Look at him. Tackle one. Yep. All smiles too as Smitty sits here on the ball. <laughs> yeah, Guts is probably like, oh, mate, wait till I get you. So. Yeah. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, Kevin's probably more embarrassed that it happened <laughs> than anything. <laughs> he looked up and saw who it was. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, now Amanjot Singh onto the ball. Look at how easy he makes that look. That's a 15-year-old just throwing them speckies, oh, all wrists. Man. Yeah. Yeah, there's been some um, really good overhead um, uh, overheads thrown all weekend. I know we, we've got to go at the back and sort of... Got to be. Oh! Shay. Shay. We've had an absolute peach of a look at that one. Uh, that was going top bins. I think it's actually ripped the, the back net corner off. Oh. It's hanging now. Oh, that can't have been far off. It's just missed the near post there. A huge opportunity. There were players all over the place. Yeah, the Fijian boys got the voodoo dolls out, I reckon. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they, they need to get Adam back out here and I think solidify the press a little bit more and... They're looking all right in a 10. Um, they haven't been able to breach too much yet, so uh, if they can just slow the game down and waste a bit of time while Adam's off, it would be good for them. Yeah, and you, you talk about the overheads that we've seen through the week. Yeah. I think the one big improvement of it, and I think you were mentioning Robbie from, from you guys' team who throws a, a big bomb. Yeah. I think the real, but that's um, you know, been awesome to see through the week, is not just the long bomb. Is it's that little one layer or the 20-yarder or the cross field that's on a dot to a player in space. Absolutely. And the defenders just have to stand there and wait. Like yeah. They can't even get amongst it. And, uh, that, that's the thing. And NZ, the, the overhead rule um, sort of uh, differs between umpires. So, <laughs> yeah. um, like even just talking to guys like Muggles, um, doing the one layers through midfield, yep. um, they're so hard to read, um, especially when they play in behind to you know some of the faster strikers out there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. As we see one. At the, oh. It's going to fall there for... Oh, that's a corner. Calvin Ratzabulli, and you're right there, Sammy. It is a corner. a corner. Well done. Just a bit of a mistrap, but um, hits the foot. Um, as we see a call come from the sideline. Um, and guess who's back? That's it. Big man's there. You know, he's had a rest. He should be ready to go. That's it. Uh, flicked the net down now. We'll just have a look at this. This is this overhead that just got half-trapped from Punga. And there it is, picked up yeah. the back of Kalen Dahl's foot there. And that's the thing at the, the National Centre here is this turf is quite bouncy. So yeah. um, as a striker, you always got to hope that they they, <laughs> like they let it through. So Yeah. You see the uh, penalty corner is pretty uh, even there, 4-3 in the favour of the Indian side. And so pretty close. And no wonder that the goals are close as well, one each. 
Here he is with a 30-foot run-up. Kylia. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Never have I ever in a game of Adam Kylia's uh, drink if you've upright reversed one into your own teammate's shoulder after half flicking the penalty corner after two cards and a goal eight minutes after the, the whistle. Did they, um, did they water at halftime, Brad? I didn't really quite yep, catch it. Yep, there yep. was a watering, so yeah, it's... Uh, so it's just technique. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe trying a bit too hard, potentially, yeah, coming it. on to make amends for the card. As we see Sarge in the back line, just yes. dropping in to outlet. Oh, it's oh. going to work here. Sachin Chiba. Open goal. And it's in, wow. it's over the line. That's an absolute scramble up of a goal. Man, I, thought, I thought Dan had I thought, got there. And I thought Dan Scanlon had made the play of the game yeah. there. That's It's, it's like, unreal that it's like it didn't the, go in the first time. So like the Tommy dead and um, yeah. run down tackle. Try saver. Look at this, Dan Scanlon, this is incredible. Unlucky. But there. Great desperation from the boys. So. And it's uh, Kalen Dial who's come all the way up from the back. That's it. Chasing through, and now, if it wasn't going to open up already, oh, 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 Scanlon just about saved their lives on one end and then delivered one on a platter for curves there. That's it. And just just that play, it's about identifying who's passing the pill. So yeah. um, Scanlon's out there on the way. You know it's going to come flat yeah. on your stick, so it's about being a little bit brave. Uh, getting in there sometimes, you know, you get the teammates, you don't expect where it's going to go. But Yeah, yeah, that's it. You know, for Dan to put his body on the line at one end and then almost um, create an opportunity on the others is, um, you know, shows how fit fit the young man is and how yep. much it means to him to play on this team. And Sam, I know you've played in your fair share of, of finals and, and playoff matches. Yep. Tell me nothing screams a grand final goal more than that one we just saw there for the Indian boys. Absolutely, absolutely. And even the defence, you know, just the, the desperation, but... You know, that's all it takes. It takes a little bobbly pass, a miss trap, and you just have to be ready. Yep. You know, like I, I said in the first round of commentary that if you you get stationary and you plant your feet, you miss that opportunity. Yep. But you, you keep your feet moving, you get it, you get stuck in, you know, those things pull off for you. Yeah, big. what a time to score too. It was only about two minutes before this quarter break, and that one's going to be unfortunate there. Yeah. For the Fiji boys, I've conceded a penalty corner right at the death of this third quarter here. As I see, uh, Harley Copper takes some um, uh, unsolicited photos of us too. Um, surprise he's allowed up here, um, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I think I'm going to try and charge royalties for this. Look at this. This <laughs> is the goal here. They've done really well. This is excellent from Scanlon, but Dial. Oh, and then Julius on the line. Yeah. Just. And Ravi Gounder as well in goal. All it took was one of them to get a little something on it, and it probably stays out. That's it. There's nothing worse than a goal that doesn't even make it to the backboard. <laughs> but that's it, man. Getting numbers around the ball, um, scrambling around the goal. You know, those those players will win you games. And, you know, without that little bit of extra effort, you know, the, the ball won't go in. So we'll see what they can do off this corner here as yeah. well. Yeah, looks like Armandjot's lining up on the first bracket. It will go to young Armandjot. Oh, bin. Absolute bin. <laughs> Uh, Game bro. over. I got nothing to say about that. Armin Jot, Tuivasa Singh. Wow. Breaking ankles, breaking hearts, breaking the net, breaking records. What more is there? Wow. We. The skills of a 25 year old, the beard of a 45 year old. What a man Armin Jot is becoming in front of our eyes. What a flick that was. And you know, that's going to lift, lift that team. You know, for a kid that, that age to do stuff like that, you know, you. Must be crazy to be out there with him, but then on the other end, um, you know, the, to leak a goal so close to the third quarter, there's going to be a big effort for this Fijian team to get back into the game now. Yeah, yeah, and it does turn two things on its head. One, obviously that 2-1 lead now pushed out to 3-1, which makes the, you know, that comfort just a touch more for the Indian side, but boy, doesn't it rock up this Fiji inside. And if yeah. you thought they were going to wait for the last sort of five to ten minutes to throw something, nah. it's coming right now. Yeah, it's yeah. coming right now. And uh, as we see there, the world's slowest drag flick from oh, Adam man. Kailia. This one is the goal. Look at it. Take it in. No one's clipping this for Instagram. This yeah. thing's mashed potatoes at best. And just really well worked by the other young man. Nice reverse trap just yeah. calmly around the goalie. 
and then just in there backing up his mate. Yeah, absolutely. And then it was very nearly the other Straight way away, there. Yeah. This was instantly after that goal got conceded. And then this is the corner. Let's look at it. I'll see it six times if we can. Out it comes. Arm and Jock. Oh, my God. And that's no just, chance. A, just an open rough slide. Yep. He just slides it into the top corner. To have the strength to do that too through the forearms is... Oh, my. That's just... It's all technique. Yeah. That's absolutely silly stuff from Arm and Jock Singh. That's uh, going to be pretty hard to beat um, any year at Heritage Tournament. And it's crazy, you know, the guys that have really stood out at these tournaments over the years have been a young, uh, have been a young player. Yep. You know, Muggles being so young in his first tournament. You talked about Kai Elliott, who's, yep. who's still out here, who's still really young. And then a young man like this to be so composed and, and fit into this team so well. Um, you know, it must give the rest of the guys around him a lot of confidence. Um, if this guy can do it at this age, then, man, we can put an effort to, um, to play just as good. So. And, and doesn't it, um, you talk about confidence for the guys around him, doesn't it just open up extra areas, you know, for a team that's so worried about Sarge, yeah. then gets killed on the other side of the field by, by Armandjot, that's now it. you've got to balance back out and play one up, yep. and all of a sudden all these guys get some space. So um, here comes Shay Iswa, just turned over there. They're going to get it back in the end. <laughs> yeah, you, you, can, you can hear a little bit of the mic chat down um, yeah. that side. And, yeah, we'll get a little bit heated in this last quarter. So uh, I won't be surprised if you see a few physical challenges going. But yeah. if this Fijian team can maybe just get a goal quite early on, it might open the game up for them. Um, but I don't... I don't to be fair, I don't see the NZI boys taking a foot off now. No, that's it. For, from a spectator, you'd love to see one probably in the first five minutes or so yep. um, to the Fiji boys and then really um, turn things up from there. But like I said, I can't see this Indian side letting up. They haven't yet this tournament um, given up leads um, like this. So, you know, it could be huge. But one thing um, that is huge, Jan Peterson, he's ripped it off. It's like the old Band-Aid. <laughs> He's maybe run out of them. They're all full of sweat, the, uh, the headbands. Yeah, He's gone out there topless. Commando, you might say. If, if there's any um, headband sponsors out there, um, I know Jan would definitely be keen. Uh, there's a few others, maybe Sarge Patel as well. Yep. Um, Caleb Williamson, yeah, I think, Caleb runs Williamson. one. And Jordy Thomas, a few of the boys running them. Yeah, and you, you, you get in earlier, you'll be able to get um, some, some good... Um, ad space for next year off the boys so yeah that's um, it uh, I think it's buy one get one half <laughs> off if you use the code Jan at <laughs> checkout that's it uh, long corner coming here through the NZI boys this is Brett Menezes trying to get it over Scanlon does well A little 3D in the circle Marnie Shay Iswa was on the spot. I'm not going to say he saved one, but it was already it was going. Uh, I'm not saying it was already going to beat Dave Finau. Speaking of beat, Adam Kylea is on the beat at the moment. Oh, that's lovely hockey, oh. unfortunately. I just couldn't figure out who that one was supposed to go to. Man, that was a bit of a throwback from Adam, just inside, outside. Yeah. Lovely pass. There's the shot. I think it was probably going wide, so yeah. good touch there by Iswa. But, yeah, that... That carry from Adam Kylea, reminiscent of some, some good old days of yeah. him eliminating whole teams at a time. That's it. This is the first, uh, first St. Kent's player that can't speak English. <laughs> no, Adam Kylea. Yeah, it's quite cool that he, he, he went there, sort of came in a few years after I left, and mm. um, to sort of have... Oh, to be at a school like St. Ken's and have a few Brown brothers playing playing the game of hockey, yep. um, it's really, really cool. Uh, here we go. Opportunity for the Indian side. What a save there in on the pads. It was Augustine Shaw for the Fijian side. Yeah, you're right. There, there's some um, you know people breaking barriers in that space, and I think those sorts of conversations is what bred something like this product that we've got now, a, a space where you can represent your culture, and especially those in minority groups, um, having this opportunity to 
to show up and show out. And uh, man, no better weekend of hockey than than here to just oh, oh. Great turn there. Kirby's taken two out with the turn. And here is Kylie Lincoln back up with Dan Scanlon. Nice skip ball there by Adam. A bit of space here for Smitty. Great Gets it passing. back. That's lovely. One more good pass is all it needs. Yeah, Wish he just had the presence to hold it on his inside foot there yeah. and, and let one go. I don't think rolling out was the play. Nah, just brought Shaho into it and yeah. just stay flat. And as they get a nice pick up here. Here it is. Dop drop off. Ratabuli. Here we go. There's a foot. Suchun. Play on. Oh. oh, what a save, Dil Patel. Yeah, great save. That's huge there because Jan was uh, already picking it out of the net. <laughs> Big Dil. Yeah, Dil's will still be excited from last night's win. So, um. Yeah, I think he has his Warriors boots on <laughs> under those uh, big orange kickers. And they go the other way here, the Indian boys. Yeah, it was just unlucky. Jan was in a good area, just trying to link up with his teammate, I think. In a perfect world, he would have gone for it. Yeah. Some space on this left side. Sarge has found the stick of Suchun. And we're going to uh, start to really open up here. Both teams yeah, rolling getting, some subs. It's getting wavy. This could be uh, really good or really bad for this Fijian side. Obviously, if they score one, money. But if they don't, Akil... Still there for the Fijian side, Ratabuli. Rick James. Oh, <laughs> Very unlucky. nearly, it was Moritz Raymond, the earlier goal scorer. Oh, he's got a bit of a lump there. And again, that was going to be a typical finals goal, had it managed yeah, its way over the line. That's it. 3 1 here. The Indians have survived the first six and a half minutes of this final quarter. Great turn, Mills. Just showing his class. He can get it back, but no, overrun it. Yeah, Mills, I think he's playing for ABC um, here at Harbour. He's, yep. um, he has good talent. It's good seeing him out here, and he's good attacking. Um, say midfield a half sort of player and um, he's another one who's developed a f quite a fair bit over the few years. Yeah, probably one of the lesser known players in this NZI side. Probably yeah. doesn't get all the, um, nah. you know, the play that certainly some of the attacking players get. Uh, but Mills is, is a real uh, grafter in that sort of yeah, defensive midfield or, or outside half type of role. Let's have a look at that last scramble in front of the goal here. Oh, we might have to wait nine and a half more minutes to uh, <laughs> look at it. I was getting a bit excited. Well, I'll put the commentator's curse on the bro, but... There we go here, Jake Suchun. Look at the legwork from her and Marnie just off the ball there to get back. And they sort of, it looks like they've gone to sort of a back five. Yeah. Um, which is really good at closing out games. He's got a bit of a bit of low block, but they get an opportunity here to a PC. Still a lot of time to go. Yeah, umpire Sammy Richmond there just uh, explaining <laughs> that. So we'll have a look at uh, this is that scramble. This across. What a save from yeah. Big Dill. And then it went back and forth here. This little shot from Akil blocked out. This one went across here, and this is the last of it. <laughs> a little bit unorthodox <laughs> in under there. That's it. And I have noticed quite a quite a bit today is uh, obviously not having Rocco. They haven't been able to have their flickers on a lot. So, um, you know, the likes of Adrian and Julius will have a dig. But, yeah, definitely hard not having Rocco here today. I like the setup. I, I'm going to bet that if it goes first bracket, Julius actually having a hit here. Yeah. Which yeah. I don't mind. You don't want to get in front of that. Although now the change of set looks like it is going second bracket. And half trap, that's heartbreaking. Here is Julius anyway. Use his body. Protects the ball down to Scanlon. Ah, uh, Suchun, in fact. And run away oh. there. Caitlin Dahl, they didn't get it right. 
And here comes the goalie off, maybe. Yep, goalie's off. Um, typical. Um, you actually saw it at the start of the second quarter in yesterday's game, a little throwaway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, uh, <laughs> I was wondering what was going on. But <laughs> I'll have to admit I didn't even notice it for the first yeah, four minutes. <laughs> yeah, well, the NZI team didn't until they got their first attack, looked up and saw no goalie. Yep. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, they were all sort of laughing, uh, having a bit of a joke about it, but you know, maybe having a little practice for today. Yeah, so here it is, seven minutes. They need two goals. Two goals will get them the draw. Two goals will get them to a penalty shootout. Yep. Though they have an open goal, so this in the inside, if you don't cut them out, they could run away with it here. Absolutely. Here's Talavao in the entry goes. <laughs> Jake Suchun, probably lucky he didn't connect with that. We've already seen Kylia done for yep. having a crack after the whistle. <laughs> There's been a few of them this weekend. I think Caleb <laughs> Williamson's had a few. Yeah. <laughs> I know definitely some of our boys have as well. Yeah, Caleb's running too fast that the wind in his ears, he can't ever oh, hear the whistle, yeah. I reckon. Nah, it's a good battle the last couple of days of him and we know what he's like. Yeah. You know, it's about keeping the ball away from his area, he'll run straight at you. And now they'll be happy to just see some seconds die as much as they can here. Sergeant with the big bomb. Fallen there for Chiba and just ran out of space there. And that's not a bad ploy, you know, without the goalie. Um, you know, the overheads really push the other team back, but you so know, they can get attack so quickly as we see with Adam. Still there for Jake Suchun. He's in the circle now. There's the 3D. Great skills by Jake. I'll just go back to that overhead down to um, the baseline for Sachin Chiba. It's interesting, he actually tried to take a couple of steps back away from the um, Fijian player. I'd rather him actually stay in close and try and get the penalty corner call. Yeah, try. Um, yeah. You know, obviously has to be given five yards to pull the ball down safely. Um, rather than back up and give himself space, is, is call the bluff of him and, <laughs> and see if he can get the corner. Yeah, and that's it. And, you know, you put the onus back on the ref yep. to make the call. And you know, sometimes they come off, sometimes they don't, and when they do, you just be quiet and just walk <laughs> yeah. off and take the corner. So. Yeah, but instead we corner other, other end. This could be huge here. It would give a full five minutes for them to score one more if they can get one here. It's like Zane and Kylia, Adam there. Upright trap. Oh, I feel as though that wasn't supposed to go to him. No, I can almost guarantee that that was supposed to go second bracket and then narrow slides on that left side. Little look up yep. Jan there as the first one and then potentially Jake as the second. Yep. Because um, even Zane looked <laughs> surprised to see that one. <laughs> Jan had already taken off. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Again, there's that overhead just breaking the field down. Through it goes. Through I sing him. Oof, and that can't have been far off there for the Indian side. I love this, playing quickly. Adam Kailia looking up. Through it goes. Oh, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Dill still looking at the hole in his pads. That would have been... An unbelievable. Uh, that, yeah, that would have been exactly what this game needed. Wow, Jan, what a touch. What a ball from Kylia. Man, he's got some vision. The delivery of that pill was spot on. Absolutely. And to be fair, you know, the two guys that, that, that can probably break this team apart is the two guys that linked up then. Yep. So, um, yeah, great vision by Adam. And, you know, it's typical Jan um, style of finish. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He'll be kicking himself up there. Having a little uh, think about it now, I think. Yeah, yeah. And I'd say Dill's uh, telling him how great his save was, too, <laughs> from right behind. Dill will tell you he was all over it, watched it the whole way. That's it. Yeah, just the NZI just happy to play small games and yeah. sort of just, just waste time and yeah. frustrate the Fijian boys. Yeah, keep as much position up here as they can. They don't care if it's uh, through another goal, they just want to hold the ball in this front half. Count those seconds down. And they're only three minutes away from their second 
Heritage Premiership. They were the first inaugural winners, of course, in Papatoitoi. Oh, and Julius has learned his lesson. Off the back shoulder was Heron Marnie. Just no one forward. Yeah. So unfortunately, they've gone down the side, Jan's on, so. The transfer has got a bit of space here. Now, Kylia. As we see, Julius up front. That one's been touched by the Indian defender. Oh, oh. yeah, we saw that for sure. Yeah, big <laughs> touch there by Armani Punga. Yeah, literally jinked it over the both players. But hey, you take this. Yep, absolutely. It's only a uh, big call because of the state of the game. That's it. Yeah. It's really good work there by Brett Menez is just to keep the ball moving and avoid overrunning it too much and getting that shepherd call that we see so often in those instances. Yeah, it's a shame the uh, Japan series was a little bit further forward. Uh, the Jude out here watching. Yeah, yeah, fella, but, uh, yeah, we were actually trying to line up getting him in on the call, but the times at the moment, I think it's about 6 a.m. over there currently. We're just trying to line things up. <laughs> For when he's due over, I think, in, in a week's time. Yeah, um, yeah he's, he's, a, he's, a good, he's a good man. Yep. Um, always down for a chat, especially in the coaching space, and it's been good to see how well he's been doing overseas. And, yeah. Um, obviously, having his kids out here every year is always good as well. Yeah, and he's a regular, jumps into the commentary whenever he can, whether yeah. it be remote or when he's here in person. So if you're watching this one, Jude, uh, shout out, safe trips. Can't wait to see you and the girls over here taking on the Black Sticks in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah, hard out, mate. It'll be good, good to see you. See you back in, in the country, so. And speaking not about the game, here's uh, Sarge. He's going to try and work his way through the uh, defenders, but turn over here. It's going to be too little, too late. For this Fiji side, even if they oh, can get man. one here. Scanlon, well covered up by Dill. It's funny Corner coming. <laughs> I think it just clipped uh, Scanny's foot on the way through. But hey, like I said, you, you just got to keep the play going. Um, and another great pass by Adam Kylia. Yeah, which huge. Looks, which looks like he's, he's sort of moved into midfield. Um, just to sort of open up some of his vision. And you kind of... <laughs> look at it now and you, you think maybe they could have done that a bit earlier not having yeah. Rocco here today yeah, but yeah. hey that's hindsight for you yeah and I think the um, that's really uh, something that's impressed me is Adam Kylie's different abilities we saw a bit of his defensive work yesterday yeah. knowing to you know get going forward and score goals and be a part of that but now his distribution today um, and big opportunity to save one more here it's the Fijian boys right up on the line one go at it. Smitty. Yeah, Smitty a go. Last corner of that. And it's wide. And it's over. And it's a second title for the New Zealand Indian men. They won the first one in Papatoi. They've come back to North Harbour and won their second thanks to a 3-1 victory over the New Zealand Fiji boys. Look at the teams there. There's Hitu and his bench. Uh, what a performance by the NZI boys. And admittedly, Sam, if you'd asked me after day one who was the team to beat, it's these guys, and they've followed through with it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, coming into the tournament, we knew they were the team to beat, and then when my um, NZ Asian boys faced them, we definitely knew they were the team to beat. Um, and well-deserved winners, you know, and uh, for this NZ Fiji team to put up such a good fight, um, yeah, they should be proud about their performance as well. Yeah, absolutely, and I know that the 3-1 scoreline in the end probably looks like it was fairly dominant, this game was an arm wrestle right through to that, that last goal to Amanjot Singh, which really just put the heater on the Fiji boys. But they were in this one. There were opportunities that you know went begging, really, and uh, could have gone either way uh, for the two teams. So, uh, you know, it's uh, a tournament which is built on taking your opportunities. And I think there's nothing uh, truer than that statement over this weekend, especially we've seen teams be dominant and not be able to finish. Yep. We've seen teams be able to finish and walk through the tournament unbeaten like this Indian side. Yep. And at the end of the day, if you can't put goals in, you're not going to win tournaments. Yeah, that's exactly right, Brad. And, you know, they've, they've been the benchmark all week. And, you know, it's kind of good for the other teams because now we know what we're up against, you know. Um, 
having a few new uh, identities at the team uh, at the tournament. Sorry. Um, yeah, it's good to good to see them out here and bringing a really good talented team. Um, yeah, it's just about the uh, other teams probably matching them now. So yeah, uh, that that's exactly it, and it's yeah. um, you know strength to strength for this Indian side because without taking anything away from this group we can still talk about guys that aren't here yep. for this indian group and uh man if they continue to grow like this um there's no reason why they can't be the next association or, or entity with two teams here exactly. like the multi side did last year yep. um, they're going to continue to grow they've got an under 23s tournament already happening yep. it's just a matter of time till they keep rolling through this uh these opportunities here and i'm looking forward to it yeah and it's kind of like a it's really interesting because the small associations like New Zealand Eye and Maldives and stuff are really doing a lot for the junior hockey in New Zealand. Um, so to see a lot of development um, coming through all the ranks, yeah, absolutely them having a juniors team would be amazing as well. Um, but it just speaks volumes of these small associations, you know, the minority associations, how much they're doing for junior hockey in New Zealand and, and it's showing. Like this, this team is not old. Very young, talented team, and like you said, we got young man 16 ripping top right reverse, uh, so top right drag flicks. So, yeah, the future's good in New Zealand Indian hockey. Yeah, and again, take nothing away from this NZ Fiji side. Absolutely. Admittedly, they were up against it right from the start of this game, and they dug in, they threw different looks, they played physical, they made it uncomfortable for this Indian side, and they got to take a lot of pride considering they just came together, a lot of new guys there, and uh, you can see how much it meant to them. We're going to uh, hear from Harley Cooper on the turf down there with uh, the world's best DVD player in Devon and Bicker. Harley, down to you. Hey guys, and we're back with the actual Heritage winning captain. DVD, obviously, mate, nothing but wins for you this entire weekend. How did you do it? What are we doing? Was it just the whole team? Was it the coaching staff? Was it the fact that you had uh, Dylan sit on the bench for like half the game yesterday? Like, What was it? Yeah, oh, I think it was just, you know, we came into camp a couple of days early and, yeah, I think we sort of built our connections on and off the field. So, um, yeah, and coaches, managers, I mean, they made it pretty easy for us just to come out and play hockey. So, yeah, no, full credit to the whole, the whole team. And uh, obviously you played the uh, NZ Fiji slash the Pacifica team. Uh, did you know they were going to come out with as much passion as they did? Because obviously in that first quarter, again, that was your guys' problem, is the first quarter coming out, actually playing that game, did you know you just had to hold them and they were just going to tire out or what? Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, like we saw yesterday, they came out firing and we knew they're obviously a pretty energetic team, pretty physical, so we sort of made an emphasis to try and come out and match it at least and then try to raise it a bit, but... I mean, yeah, I mean, we sort of didn't really get down ourselves that we didn't really get it done in the first quarter like we wanted to, but I mean, yeah, like we came out and managed to close it out, which is good. Cool, obviously going forward you guys are the, uh, not quite back to back, but the Heritage Tournament is going for four years, you guys have won it twice, New Zealand Māori have won it twice, so you're going to try for the back to back to take the, uh, the ascension out of the group in three out of five? Yeah, no, of course, I mean, hopefully, you know, we have couple more teams of the tournament if um, all the teams are here so I mean the future of this tournament's pretty exciting so and uh, you guys had a young talent Armaget um, obviously 15 years old talented to boot are you guys going to be unleashing any more of those guys on us next year I mean I feel lucky that I've retired yeah. so I don't have to deal with them but have you got any more of those guys like just in the back pocket waiting I don't know I mean there's not too many that are that young and that that kind of special of a player so I mean I think we're just happy that he's on our side of the field really I mean I'm not going to lie, he had that flick, amazing top bins, yeah. did, it, did you teach him that? I wish I could take credit, but I mean, that's, yeah, it's all him really. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. Well thank you very much and I'm going to let you guys celebrate with your boys. Well done mate. And that of course was the winning captain from the NZI, men, Devon and Bicker, part of the strong Wellington Indian Sports Club contingent in this NZI team who have come out victorious in this year's 2024 Heritage Hockey Tournament. The New Zealand Indian men are your champions. They join the Heritage Barbarians atop the mountain, which is Heritage Hockey 2024. Uh, Sam, what a final. It had everything in it. It had ugly goals. It had beautiful goals. It had yep. cards. It had everything in between. Uh, sum up in, in as quick as you can what that final was. Oh, just an excitement machine really, you know, it was end to end most of the game and that's what you want in a final, you want a close game. Um, 
you know, physical battles all over the park, you know, you don't want a boring one-ended final. So, you know, it was, it was really good. Um, two good teams came together and, you know, the, the team of the week um, definitely won. So, uh, yeah, congratulations to NZI and, and well done to all the teams that have been here all weekend. Yeah, uh, I'll mirror, mirror your sentiments uh, across the whole weekend. What an epic display of hockey again here at the beautiful National Hockey Centre here in North Harbour. Fitting venue for such a, an exceptional tournament. Congratulations to every team and every player, every umpire, official and coach that took the field over the week. Um, it's a fantastic display of hockey. Of course, thank you to our major sponsors, One Foundation. We couldn't do this uh, on the field or up in the commentary box without the support of One Foundation. Uh, been absolutely huge over the four years, which is Heritage Hockey. They are, of course, joined this year by MTEL Intelligent Solutions, Keeper Life Insurance and Risk Management, and the team at Go Hockey. Uh, it was pretty epic to talk to Eddie a little earlier in the weekend uh, about their support as well. Um, but what a weekend, what a way to finish Easter. If you weren't here, FOMO, you get down here next year, wherever the tournament ends up, hoping we're back here in the beautiful facility, which is the National Hockey Centre. And potentially with more teams, more flavour, more uh, background, more um, excitement and more hockey for Heritage 2025. Uh, thank you for joining us along all these games, whether you watched one or all 16. It's been a pleasure to bring you all the action. I've been Brad Pittman for the last time, joined by Sam Hewitt. Thanks again.